Welcome to another edition of Climate Jam, a series of interviews on solutions to climate change. My name is Jason Grenier. If you are interested in pursuing the kinds of topics discussed on Climate Jam, please visit the BC Sustainable Energy Association, which is a group that is attempting to educate the government, businesses, and the public that there are solutions to climate change. Their website, bcsea.org. Today, I have on the phone with me Kaylee Lenz, an editor and one of the founders of Adbusters, a magazine that contains shocking photographs and artwork, along with articles that are thought-provoking to say the least. The magazine is known for their spoofs on corporate advertisements and their campaigns including Buy Nothing Day, TV Turn Off Week, and Occupy Wall Street. Adbusters also dedicates a large portion of its magazines to politics, mental health issues, and climate change. So anyways, thank you for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. Could you just start off by giving us a short history of the magazine and why it was created? Yeah, we were born, uh, my God, it's, it's uh, about 25 years ago now, back in 1989. And we were born out of this uh, this fight that we had with uh, the forest industry. Uh, back then, um, the forest industry was cutting the, the forest down very fast and and some people were getting a bit worried that it was going a bit too fast. So they came up with this uh, this uh, multi-million dollar advertising campaign. Their slogan was Forests Forever. So uh, so on in newspapers, you know, full page ads in the in the Vancouver Sun and, and uh, 30 second spots on TV were basically saying, hey, British Columbians, you've got nothing to worry about. You've got forests forever. Uh, and we, uh, a few... Uh, ecological green people uh, we, we came up with our own 30 second tv spot that that gave the light to that 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 spoke back against that and and when we tried to buy airtime on the cbc and a few other uh, tv stations then they refused to sell us the airtime and this uh, this this obnoxious notion that uh, uh, corporations and a forest industry can go and buy as much time as they want on TV, whereas uh, private citizens are, are not allowed access. That enraged us. That got us so angry that we put out a newsletter, which then grew to uh, to a magazine, and, and the magazine grew to you know beyond the newsstand throughout Canada and eventually throughout uh, North America and, and now throughout the whole English-speaking world. And hence, that's how the magazine was born. That's how the magazine was born, yes. First as a newsletter, and there was a lot of interest in the newsletter. And, and, and this incident actually became quite a big incident because uh, the CBC was suddenly under the spotlight and people were asking, you know, well, how come that citizens don't have access? And, yeah, it was sort of a, a fairly, fairly sort of a activist moment that, uh, that, that, uh, that somehow allowed our newsletter to, uh, to expand very quickly to, a, first of all, a local and then a much larger magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, can, would you describe your magazine as an activist magazine? Oh, absolutely! Yeah, we we sort of uh, we actually call our magazine the, the Journal of the Mental Environment. But uh, but more and more, you know, we we're uh, you know throughout our our evolution, we have become a magazine that uh, launched the the culture jamming movement, which has since become one of the hubs of global activism, and and uh, and we've launched various social marketing campaigns. Uh, including Buy Nothing Day, and uh, and of course uh, uh, a couple of years back, you know, we were uh, one of the we we catalyzed this uh, Occupy Wall Street as well. So we see ourselves as as people who, uh, you know, who try to sort of uh, talk back against the status quo in the most visceral way. Yeah, and I I want to get back to that uh, Occupy Wall Street, but first I want to ask you. Um, See, Adbusters tackles issues very differently than any other book or media I've seen. W- one of the issues is depression. Uh, the message I get from the magazine is that it is not the fault of the individual that is uh, depressed. Uh, it is the fault of the world that has been created by capitalism that has caused 
uh, that is the cause of the depression. Uh, so many depressed people need to understand this uh, uh, to take the first step to feeling better. So that's what I get from your magazine. Mm. I, am I on the right page? And, and could you expand on festering? I mean, the, we, uh, over the last few years, the, the global situation has grown uh, very, very ominous. You know, we are now uh, faced with not just uh, financial bubbles that, uh, that are always in danger of bursting and, 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 and starting another 1929 kind of scenario. And above all, you know, we are faced with a, uh, with a global warming and a climate change crisis, which some people are calling the biggest market failure that the world has ever seen. Uh, and, uh, and yet somehow, because of uh, commercial TV and because of the sort of uh, a very positive uh, mood that all magazines and most of the media tries to sort of put out, you know, people aren't able to sort of really grasp that. We, you know, very few people are aware of the fact that this human experiment of ours on planet Earth is actually in great danger right now. And if we continue to uh, uh, push uh, carbon into the atmosphere and if we continue to have this sort of a flash trading, uh, crazy uh, um, global marketplace, you know, then this human experiment of ours really could suddenly descend into a, a very long, dark age. So I guess what you could say is that Adbus is we're sort of in a kind of a, a dark apocalyptic mood and we feel that we're one of the few people who, who are actually saying it like it is and trying to wake people up to, to the fact that the future doesn't compute. And, and if you're an activist, then you better stand up and start fighting for a different kind of a future. Yeah, well said. And just speaking on that, I mean, I know a lot of people who believe in climate change. Uh, they've even done research to prove it to themselves, you know, that it is true. And still, you know, they go about their lives, uh, you know, business as usual. They don't do much uh, about anything. And they even uh, continue to invest in, in companies that, they, that destroy yeah. the environment. Um, That's right. Yeah, yeah. How, how, does, how do you get through? How does the magazine try to get through to to these people are are is that the audience that we're targeting or, or what what's well we're not targeting any audience we basically come up with every issue of ad busters just the way we feel we we're, we're very tuned in we have a, a culture jammers network that's a hundred thousand strong people of, of around the world who who see themselves as as, uh, as activists or culture jammers and so we talk to them all the time and and, and we do a lot of research and and we sort of have our antennas out and we're, we're sort of tuned into the global zeitgeist um, and then we put out an issue of ad buses that we think is appropriate for the next two months. You know, we're a bi-monthly. We come up with uh, six magazines every year. And, uh, and yeah, so, that, so, so we don't actually, uh, you know, we don't usually, we don't play the usual sort of magazine game where you, you sort of have a business model and then you, <laughs> and then you somehow, you know, try to sort of satisfy your demographic. We, we don't play that game. Well, it's uh, it's a very uh, interesting magazine, uh, to say the least, and I urge people to at least uh, get their hands on one uh, just to give it a shot and, and, and see what they think of it. Uh, how can people get their hands on these magazines? Well, the best way is to go to uh, our website, adbusters.org, and, and there you'll, you'll see synopses of various issues, and, and if you're interested, you can just buy, you know, uh, you know one... Uh, you know, one digital issue, or you can you can buy one back issue, or you can you can subscribe for a year, or you can join the Culture Jammers Network and start receiving these tactical briefings and bulletins and 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 sort of activist uh, barbs that we put out every now and again. And just getting back to uh, one of the examples of your uh, magazine, you know, today's eco economic system can be measured by uh, watching a city's landfill. Uh, if the landfill oh, yeah. is growing at an at an exponential rate, that yeah. means you know the economy is doing well, right? And that and and that's, that's a good measure. Yeah, that's better than the GDP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and your magazine put on a campaign uh, called Buy Nothing Day, and I thought that was such a great idea. Uh, what kind of effect were the organizers like? If Buy Nothing Day really uh, touched a lot of people and people really did that for one day what kind of effect would that have on the economy or or, or the earth yeah you know when we started uh, you know we sort of launched by nothing day uh, 
uh, it's over 20 years ago now, and when we first did it back in the uh, 1990s, then, then it was a really edgy kind of a thing, and people were totally thrown by this, this these three crazy words, you know, buy nothing day, you know, I remember wearing a, a button on my on my uh, coat, and, and people looked at that thing, and they were just absolutely perplexed, because at the time, it was, uh, it was crazy to somehow... Uh, suggest that that we should buy less or that we that that there's some sort of a dark side to consumer culture but since then of course i mean uh, i think most people these days are aware of the fact that there's a, a very profound connection between uh, you know uh, consumption and and uh, and climate change consumption and and, and the environment and, and and consumption and 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 the, and the psychological condition that we're in you know what you know the, the advertising being the cutting edge of of capitalism and, and of consumption you know what what does it mean when you're getting you know hundreds of consumption messages uh, pushed into your brain whether you like it or not you know from the moment you're a little baby crawling around the tv set in the living room you know until the day that you finally sort of die in an old folks home so so there is a um, you know by nothing day is is is, is is an important thing but we're way beyond that now you know it worked 20 years ago but now we're now we're you know we're trying to to launch campaigns that uh, you know that sort of get the economic students in universities around the world to to start speaking uh, speaking back against their professors and 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 we're we're sort of uh, fighting for a paradigm shift in the in the theoretical foundations of economic science and 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 this we believe more, way more than buy nothing day uh, or tv turn off week or anything like that uh, you know this this uh, theoretical shift in in economic science this is what really has to happen if we're going to have any kind of a, a future on this planet do you believe that our economic future is bright when we talk about uh, sustainability, green energy? Like, like can can we survive by changing everything? You know, changing to solar, changing to wind, and and, uh, and all these other sorts of pieces to the sustainable puzzle. Well, uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that you know all, all these initiatives they they are all pushing in the right direction. But uh, the feeling that we have right now here at Adbus is that we have to go way further than than just you know riding bicycles instead of cars and 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 and, uh, and, and you know playing that sort of green card. We believe that we have to sort of uh, think about how how economists measure progress and whether they really know how to do that. And and, and we have to ask the question that can we really continue growing forever on on a finite planet? And and what does it mean when when uh, whenever you open up a uh, the business pages of a newspaper or whenever you tune into a, a business program on TV that all they ever talk about is the imperative of growth you know how we how how the secret of of, of success in the future is always just to keep growing uh, and we feel that this uh, you know these sort of fundamental assumptions the fundamental axioms of of economics of the current neoclassical economic paradigm, they're fundamentally wrong. And we have to learn how, how to come up with new measures of progress, you know, beyond the GDP. And, and we have to think about what it means, you know, when a, when a country uh, like Canada or United, like the United States or like the, many of the other countries in the first world, when we're actually coming up against the, the you know, the, the fact that maybe we can't actually keep on growing forever. And, and we have to create a different kind of a economic system that, that, that grows in, in different ways rather than, than in these ecological destructive ways and the last question that I want to ask you it, it, it's the big one is Occupy Wall Street it happened mm. a few years ago it's still fresh in people's mind what was Adbusters role in that well we were the, the people who were inspired by what was happening in Tunisia and, and Egypt and and the whole Arab Spring you know we were the people who who sort of came up with this idea that uh, if a revolution is uh, possible in in Egypt, then why why couldn't we also think of having some sort of revolution in in in, in America? And, and we came up with this idea of uh, of occupying the iconic heart of global capitalism, which is Wall Street. Uh, and we uh, we came up with a poster uh, and, and put it in the issue of Adbusters a few months before the the event, and, and then we decided that September 17 was a a good moment to try to pull this off. And then we started putting out tactical briefings, and and we came up with that hashtag Occupy Wall Street, and we started talking to uh, to some uh, on the ground activists there in in New York, and uh, and then somehow uh, you know uh, we had no idea that it would grow to be as big as it did. But then when September 17 came around, then a, a few thousand people actually did turn up, and and then after that it started to have an incredible life of its own. So. Uh, uh, and as, as you know, that uh, you know the 
there was like almost 1,500 occupations all around the world uh, uh, in the in the weeks following uh, September 17. So it was uh, it was one of the most incredible sort of moments uh, in activist moments, a global activist moments that uh, that we had ever seen in the whole history of uh, 25 year history of Adbusters. Yeah, I remember in uh, Victoria here, we had our uh, tent city up be- behind uh, City Hall. and um, Yeah, here too in Vancouver, we also had quite a, something that uh, went on for a few weeks here. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. of course, I would imagine that, that you, you would say we, we even have to go bigger than that to, to really be successful. Well, things, the, the, the conventional wisdom about Occupy is that, oh, it sort of came and had its moment in the sun and then it's fizzled out. But I don't think it's fizzled out at all. I think that the, the, that basic impulse behind Occupy Wall Street, which is that, that young people all around the world feel that the future doesn't compute and they, they have to stand up and fight for a different kind of a future. I mean, that feeling is still very much alive all over the world. And since Occupy Wall Street, you know, the sleeping in the parks has stopped, but, but since uh, we stopped sleeping in Zuccotti Park, you know, there have been um, huge uprisings in, in, in uh, South America and, and in, in Turkey, and, and, and the pussy riot, uh, rioters are doing their stuff in, in, in Russia. And, and uh, so if you look at um, what young people all around the world are doing, you know, uh, they're building on Occupy Wall Street. Occupy Wall Street was just one little, little hub along the way. And, and now... Uh, if the global economy suddenly takes a turn for the worst, and then I think it's very, very possible that uh, that there will be another global big bang moment that that will be, uh, you know, way bigger than Occupy ever was. So I see Occupy as being sort of something that happened a couple of years back that uh, yeah, that 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 is still building momentum. And all I can say about that is when I go to see uh, these different speakers, uh, I can see the crowds are getting larger and larger mm-hmm. and larger. So there's more people interested in uh, in this kind of stuff. You know, they're interested in their future. Yeah, and I think that global global warming is still sort of, uh, you know, coming at us uh, in an accelerated way, you know, and uh, it's just sort of building and building and nobody seems to quite know how to deal with it. And uh, the, the global um, casino, the global economic system, the, the, the way it's currently structured, you know, looks more dicey than ever before, you know. So, so uh, you know, I basically wake up every morning, you know, expecting that the global economy uh, has suddenly collapsed and the Dow Jones has gone down by, by a few thousand points. So I, I think that if uh, global warming keeps on getting worse and if, uh, uh, and, and if uh, the financial markets continue to be very unstable. Uh, so if there is some sort of a major, the major sort of a crash moment, you know, that's that will be the moment, you know, when the the global revolution will begin. We're living in interesting times, I tell you. Absolutely, this yeah. is the most. Ex- I can't. Uh, I mean, I, I'm 72 years old, and I've, I've seen a lot of things, including that Big Bang moment that happened back in 1968, and yet I haven't seen anything like this before. I've never seen a, a moment when. Uh, you know, when the seven billion people on planet Earth are, are, are caught in a in a more dangerous moment, and they somehow have to learn how to deal with it. Well, anyways, uh, it's uh, been very enjoyable talking with you, and uh, thank you for joining me. Okay, my pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Adios for now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Now bye bye. Bye bye. Now bye bye. Bye bye.